Okay, now welcome back, thank you. Now, um, everybody here knows that over the last few years, and this is our chance really uh, from a much more international perspective, specifically uh, on one of the most fascinating countries in the world, China, uh, you will know that huge amounts of Chinese investment has been flowing into the UK. And at the other end of the bridge, clearly, China represents an incredible opportunity uh, for British entrepreneurs. But how uh, to cross that bridge? Well, clearly, Russ joins us, who's just got back uh, from uh, Shenzhen, as I want to hear about your escapades as well. I'm delighted also to welcome up, uh, at the other end of the panel, John Zai, known to many of you already. He's the founder of Senti, which is bridging the gap between London and China, particularly the tech companies. Uh, he's also the tech, uh, Shanghai Advocates founder and, of course, an ambassador for London Tech Week. So welcome back, uh, John. Very nice to see you, John Zai. Uh, Caitlin Zhang is uh, from Caitlin Zhang Branding. So you work with some incredible clients. It's a global branding agency specializing in building brands between China and Western economies. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you very much for joining us on your all. So, so let's... Uh, where, where should we begin? Um, John, in, in broad terms, why are Chinese investors right now, in your view, paying such close attention to London and London tech in particular? What is it that attracts their attention? I think there's uh, many, many reasons. I mean, uh, you know, China has been developed for the last 20 years. And now we, you know, you know, we need to upgrade everything in my country. And then uh, we, we did a lot of stuff, to be honest. Our, I don't know, uh, the business model kind of like business, I do very well, everybody knows the BAT. Uh, but to be honest, we talk, when we're talking about the real tech, when we're talking about the deep tech, uh, China still, uh, you know, probably, I don't know, maybe people say it's like 20 years back from the European side, uh, I think maybe 15 years, something like that. So we do need to look for some opportunity in the, in the European, especially, you know, London is one of the tech capital in the European. And then there's a lot of uh, like real tech, or when we talk about tech, deep tech or real tech. And this kind of stuff is not something, you know, China can use in, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and we just over it. So we still need to learn a lot of things. We still need to look for something which we believe the you know, they can, I mean, be implemented. Okay, and, and when you're in Shenzhen and in Shanghai, and you're having a conversation with a Chinese investor about the UK right now, what do you say to them? I say a lot. <laughs> I just, I just telling them, to be honest, uh, because I'm telling you a little bit secret, because right now the most famous investor in China, because the, the age of them is between, I don't know, like 45 to 55. So that term, that part of the, that portion of the, you know, that group of the Chinese investor, they are not actually like me. I mean, studying UK. Most of them, they're studying the uh, American. And they are doing a lot of things in Silicon Valley. So to be honest, the more, most powerful people in China, I mean, the investor sector, they're all thinking America is still the best option. And they don't, you know, they don't actually know too much about the London, okay, okay. okay. So I'm just telling them, you have to see, you have to try, you have to actually open your mind to, to, to see what is happening in London. And, and Caitlin, what do you make of our combined opportunity? Where do you see uh, the real value that we can create working together? Um, I think there's a lot of Chinese investors who are actually looking at UK and Europe as well, in addition to America. Um, the, the brand Britain is so strong that in the, in the UK, we're known for our tech, we're known for our innovation, and for amazing talent, which is, you know, talent is still a little bit lacking in China in some research and development and technology areas. And they're looking at what the UK is doing. I believe there's a lot of opportunities for UK tech companies to look at going into the Chinese market, right? Because we're so global, we're so global in London, right. we're so global in... So your, your, your top advice, and clearly branding is your expertise, but your advice to British entrepreneurs as they look at and eye up the Chinese market, your, 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 top, your top tips. Top tips for, you have to demonstrate that you understand what China is about. So it's a different marketing environment, it's a different business environment. So having somebody on your team who knows a little bit more about China would be really excellent. Um, there are loads of people who are bilingual, bicultural, get to know them. And secondly, understanding intellectual property, because that's very different in China. Um, if you're a UK business going into China, it's first come, first serve. So if you apply first, you get it first. 
So go to China now, go apply for your IPs. Okay. And are there particular hotspots, things that you consider are really attracting a lot of interest and attention, particularly in China right now? What's hot? And are there any areas where we as British entrepreneurs might be at a bit of an advantage? Mm. So what we're looking at, of course, we talked a lot about machine learning, artificial intelligence. One of the really great ways to get into China is looking at smart cities. So there are a lot of you know, mobility related projects and big data related projects in smart cities and getting to know municipal government, new development areas and working with them. Yeah. Okay, now Russ, you've uh, recently got me back off a plane uh, from, uh, uh, from Shenzhen. Some observations, what would you draw our attention to uh, uh, as, as you know, positive opportunities? I guess. Yes, well, I, I, if you haven't been to China, you must go. It is such an eye-opener in terms of seeing what's happening there, how quickly and evolving things are changing. It's very different, and I say to people here, entrepreneurs, investors, I know Paul Sheedy from Unified is here, he's been to China a number of times. Go in with your eyes open, it's very different. Go in with a good partner. You know, I've, I've known Caitlin, I've now known John for a number of years, and John has done a terrific job helping me and others get exposed to the landscape there, to understand how you need to do business there, what works, what doesn't work. So having a good relationship and working with both Caitlin and John, these are two really great people who can help to navigate. Thank you, Ross. And, no, I'm, I'm serious. I met, I met Caitlin a few times. We did CNBC together. John and I met in Beijing, and we then we met on the Jubilee line a few weeks after that, um, <laughs> as fate would have it. Go in with people like these two individuals who know the landscape, who also know the London, UK, and European tech ecosystem, and who can help you to navigate. Okay, and I wonder if we can get just a bit more practical on that question, what works, what doesn't work. Words of wisdom, John, be as uh, specific as you like. Uh, maybe an example of what doesn't work, where you've seen investors or entrepreneurs run into trouble. What's an example? Uh, to be honest, if you, um, because we've been doing these kind of things for quite a long time, if you decide to go to China, you have to be serious. You can't just get in. You go to China to try. If you can raise money, find some market, and you just do. If not, you just go back and never show up. China is a very big country. There's a lot of doing business in China. is 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 different compared with the I don't know the most of the country because we have a long history. We have a special business culture, and the business culture in China is very special. Mm. Uh, some people may like it, you know, for example, like drink a lot of alcohol, which means you can make more business. This is, at, at least I like it. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, um, and then uh, I think there's many tips. Uh, I, I, if, if anyone here wants to know more, you just have to straight go straight to me. Well, we so do want you to Well, I know that's your technique. Keep it, keep it mysterious. I like that. Uh, but, 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 it, but it does interest me about this uh, connection because I wonder about the British, uh, you know, Chinese relationship. I, I wonder, um, Kaylin, could this be an emerging special relationship between the countries? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, there are two kind of great things that's happening. Um, one is Chinese investors, most of them think that Brexit is a good thing for China and UK relationship. Secondly, as I just a, say, why they think that? Um, because they think that this opens the UK to have more better conversations and more conversations with China on business relationships and developing relationships between the two governments. Right. And secondly, the pound has dropped since Brexit a little bit so with versus the RMB, which means, hey, your, your money goes a bit further in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and very broadly, you were warm in your comments about brand Britain, but what, what do you see uh, from China? Any, any advice to us as we remain, uh, you know, we aspire to be the global connector, as Russ has said, but what, what would you say to us? I would say, as you're going and thinking, as thinking into going into China, um, don't try to take on the whole Chinese market at once. You know, go into one or a few different cities, or maybe not even tier one cities, could be tier two cities. Be really strategic in your brand positioning and your marketing positioning. When you go into China, that will demonstrate to an investor that you understand the business environment. Well, something I feel we should have touched on, we're running out of time again, uh, is for British investors, there must be a huge amount of entrepreneurial talent uh, coming out of China right now. Is that, is that a bridge you also build? John, do you see that connection or not as much? I mean, the talent's from China to come to UK. Well, indeed. But also, also maybe, maybe British maybe. capital being deployed into Chinese scale-ups, I guess. Maybe the first thing we have to uh, solve the, the visa problem. 
it so we can have more <laughs> talent from China. Yeah, right. definitely. That this is something. The talent, you know, the startup is always coming with the talent. So I'll always always do this. So, 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 so it strikes me about um, um, uh, uh, China, Russ. Like me, some huge misconception. One thing that you've learned in these early stages of this new journey. Well, I think to, to pick up on the point that was made. I mean, I had a very interesting experience with with John in in March because I went to my first tier one city. So you've got Beijing, you've got Shanghai, you've got Shenzhen in the Greater Bay Area next to Hong Kong, which are obviously very Chinese, but also very international. And we went to Wuxi, which is a tier one city, you know, tier one, tier two cities. And I would say if you really want to get an understanding of, of the real China, go to a tier one city. Um, I joked with a few people, I had my, we're not in Kansas anymore, experiences where I was the only Westerner in the hotel at the events you know, John is wonderful at, at translating everything, but it just felt like a very different experience. No less welcoming, no less interested. And the people, the, the officials that we met from the city of Wuxi were so eager to connect internationally. They know they need to work at it. They know they not only need to work on their language skills, but to understand how does business operate outside of China in a very different way. That was a real eye-opener. Right. Well, I already know from this conversation uh, that the three of you are going to have a queue of people who want to speak with you afterwards. Uh, massively intriguing. Thank you so much, John, Kaylin, and of course, Russ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.